Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today, we're going to be refurbing a Game Boy Color. Now, this Game Boy Color has two problems. Number one, the speaker on it is defective. No sound is coming out. However, when I plug my earphones in, ear sound is coming out of the earphone jack. By the way, that's a quick check you can do to make sure that your problem is most likely just the speaker and not some more deep-rooted issue where you actually might want to stay away from the Game Boy if that's the case. You can just plug a pair of earphones in if the sound's coming out. It most likely is just the speaker being defective. Number two, the shell is actually in not such great shape. Uh, we need replacement stickers on it, we need to refurb the shell because it's a little rough around the edges and I'll be doing that at a later date. Today, rather than refurbing the uh, shell with replacement stickers and whatnot, since this is an atomic pur purple shell which is one of the rarer Game Boy Color shells, we'll be going an easier route and we'll just be reshelling it into one of these clear orange uh, Game Boy Color Pokemon Edition uh, replacement shells. Now. Before we get started, you are going to need a couple of things for this repair. Obviously, you're going to need the replacement shell if you want to do a reshell like I'm doing today. After that, you're going to need a replacement Game Boy Color speaker. You can get these on eBay or AliExpress for less than a dollar a piece. So I'll put a link down below where I got mine. You will need a screwdriver with a Phillips head and a tri-wing head screwdriver. And lastly, you're going to need a soldering iron. So with that equipment, we'll be able to do the full fix today, replace the speaker, reshell the Game Boy, and you guys are gonna see the Game Boy Color is one of the easier Game Boys to work on. It's one of the funner Game Boys to work on, really. So stay tuned, and let's start by taking this Game Boy apart. So first step for taking the Game Boy Color apart, we have six tri-wing screws, two under in the battery compartment and four on the side of the Game Boy. So let's start by taking those out. Perfect, so now that we have the shell open, we're just gonna set it aside. Uh, if you're going to do like me and keep the original shell to refurb it at a later date, make sure to keep all the screws, all the parts together. And now we have the inside of the Game Boy. So first thing I recommend that you do is you disconnect the ribbon cable. You wanna make sure not to damage it, so to not forget, I always start by detaching the ribbon cable. You just Press up at the same time on each side on these black little flaps. They will unlock the ribbon cable and then you just pull it out. You can leave it like that for the moment. We won't need to pull it out any further because what we're going to have to do next is attack the three Phillips head screws on the motherboard to release the front PCB. Perfect, so now with our PCB separate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just pull our speaker as far away as we can from the motherboard. And we're going to take our soldering iron. I set it somewhere generally around 350 degrees. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and separate the contacts from the speaker. There we go, it's not any more difficult than that. I always try to reuse the exact same cables. It's much easier than running new cables to your speaker. Now we are going to add a little bit of solder on the speaker itself just to make sure that the solder on there is fresh. Speakers, because they're magnetic, can sometimes give you a little bit of trouble like you just saw there, where they try to attach to your soldering iron. So you have to try to work on the side as far away from the center of the speaker as possible. So a little bit of solder like that added. And then we're going to attach our speaker.
like so. Now for the speaker repair, it shouldn't be any more difficult than that. What, you can, what I would recommend doing at this point, since we set aside the rear shell, we're just gonna really quickly pop it back in. Pop in a couple of batteries. Make sure we have the sound turned up all the way, which is turning the knob towards the bottom. And we're going to hit the power switch. And there we have the Game Boy Ping. So just so you guys can hear that again, I'm not going to talk this time. There we go, we have a working repaired speaker. So repairing a Game Boy Color speaker is no more difficult than that. So now we're going to take our replacement shell and start working on the shell replacement. So first step before we reshell the Game Boy um, and once we've replaced the speaker is giving the PCB a quick cleanup because since you don't know necessarily where this Game Boy is coming from unless it's one of your own, I always start by giving it a good clean. So I take some isopropyl alcohol, go quickly over all the components, try and give a little extra attention to the card slot, the battery contacts, try not to bend them too much, and just a quick one over on the PCB. Same thing on the other side. And I personally always shoot a little bit into the connectors, try to get in there as best I can with my toothbrush. And always recommended you can do the exact same thing for the power switch. Sometimes over time they get gunked up on the inside, shooting a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Moving the switch back and forth is always a good idea. It cleans out the inside. Perfect. Now we're going to give it a couple of seconds to dry off. Now I use 99% isopropyl alcohol, so it actually dries off really quickly. You don't need to wait till it's fully dry. And then I always give it a good shot of WD-40. And same thing again. Once over, all the components with a toothbrush with a WD-40. On the other side, you don't. I don't really add any because you have enough generally on the toothbrush at that point. The point is only to give a general clean because this one looks like on the inside, it was in pretty good shape anyways. And personally, I always shoot an extra jolt into the game slot and also, once again, the power connector. You want to get some inside and then you just move it back and forth. Perfect. So now we're going to set our PCB aside. It's ready to go for our cleanup. We're going to let it dry off. I'm going to clean off my table and we'll come back and look at getting the screen out so we can start the reshell. So 
Getting the screen out of the front is actually easier than it looks. I use the ice tray method, which is basically like you're trying to get an ice cube out of a tray. You're going to take the front panel and you're just going to twist it like so. And you look pretty easily, you're going to feel the glue letting go and we've got our screen out. So do be careful not to scratch it because at this point it is not protected in any way. What I recommend is I right away take the replacement shell and place the screen in there. That way it has some level of protection while we're setting up the rest of it. Okay, so now that we have our screen set and our PCB is dry, the, it's, the, what's all that's left over is basically reassembling the Game Boy. And personally, I find that this is the easiest step of the process. Honestly, like I said, working on a Game Boy Color is one of the easiest Game Boys to work on and the most pleasant to work on because reassembling is actually pretty easy. So we're just going to put in our buttons. like so. Next come the rubber pads. There we go. Now for the PCB, we I do the opposite. I start with the screen cable because it's easier to actually attach it when the PCB isn't screwed in yet. Get your power switch to the off position so that it lines up properly. Now you're gonna have to basically turn your speaker cables back so that they fit in the compartment. And basically you have everything back in place. Now some people say to use the original Nintendo screws. Uh, my experience have actually proven the opposite because sometimes even though the shells are pretty close to the original Nintendo shells, I have come across some shells that had small differences in the screw sizes and I winded up stripping the replacement shells by trying to use the original Nintendo screws. So I personally recommend using the screws that they send with the shell because they're generally perfectly sized to fit that particular replacement shell. Perfect. So we already have our PCB in there and it's looking pretty nice. Now this particular, my, sorry about that guys. This particular shell actually came with a replacement battery contacts, which is not always the case. So if your shell does not have these replacement battery contacts, you'll have to harvest them from your original Game Boy shell to replace them. And I was almost forgetting the IR cover here for the infrared. Perfect. So I almost forgot the IR cover there. I just replaced it and then got the shell back together. We're going to flip back to... Um, actually, this time the screws they provided are Phillips heads on the outside as well. So, it'll be pretty obvious that this is a replacement shell to anyone who knows uh, in depth the Game Boy Color. but. Like I said, the point isn't to fool anyone. The point is just to have a Game Boy Color in, nice, in a good shape. So now all we have to do is replace these six exterior screws.
Perfect, so now that our shell is closed, uh, we have only the final step left, which is installing our screen. So basically, you're going to want to remove the covering from the back. I finish with the part covering the screen just because you want to make sure that it stays nice and clean. I already gave it this a shot with some uh, rubbing alcohol and a clean cloth to make sure that it is perfectly clean on the inside. And then we just insert our screen. You could get a nice glass replacement. The only thing is I wanted to have the Pokemon logos on the side. So I decided to go with the one that came with the case once again. I already popped in a couple of AA batteries. And let's flip the power switch. And there we go. We have our reshell done. So here we are with the final product. I think it turned out pretty well. And honestly, for about 15 minutes of work, we managed to replace a speaker and reshell a Game Boy Color. I've mentioned it a couple of times already in the video, but the Game Boy Color is one of the easiest Game Boys to work with for reshelling and working on the inside. So honestly, if you have a chance to pick up an old one or a beat up one, uh, for $10, and I'll put the link down below where you can get the shells on eBay, uh, you can get them from Retro Modding, you can get them from AliExpress, there's a bunch of places that hold all kinds of shells like these, and there's all kinds of different models, simple color combinations, anything you can think of. So um, check them out, because honestly, like I said, picking up a banged up Game Boy Color, even one a broken one, I got this one for under 10 bucks because the speaker was broken and the person was selling it as a defective Game Boy. So honestly, overall, an extra $10 investment and I find that I've got now a fully functional and really good looking Game Boy Color. So if you're looking at uh, getting into retro gaming on a real budget, this is a really decent option for you to have some good looking equipment and still get into the retro gaming scene. So, as usual, please leave your um, comments down below. Please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I hope you guys liked the video. If you didn't like it, dislike as well and just let me know why. Maybe I can make it better next time. And as usual, I hope I'll be seeing you guys in my next video.